This is an exciting day. Hello and welcome to episode 158 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today I'm going to be talking with the president and CEO of Dexcom, Kevin Sayer. Kevin's making, I think, his third appearance on the podcast, and today we're talking about some brand new news. Just yesterday, the FDA approved the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor, and Kevin and I are going to talk all about it. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Omnipod, and Omnipod, of course, is a tubeless insulin pump. It is the one that Arden has been using for, geez, since she was four years old, and we absolutely love it. When you hear us talking about bumping and nudging blood sugars on the podcast, we do it with an Omnipod, and you could too. Go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box or the link in your show notes to find out more. The podcast is also sponsored today by Dexcom. Dexcom, makers of the new G6 continuous glucose monitor and the G5. It's all good. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. The link's in your show notes. Guys, we're going over it all today. As you know, the Dexcom G6 has just been approved by the FDA. I've got Kevin Sayer here from Dexcom to talk all about it. Everything he can talk about right now. Timelines are all a little up in the air, but we go over it. So when can you expect the new G6? How much is it going to cost? Is there an upgrade program? What's with this thing they say there's no more finger sticks? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all coming right now. Nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before being bold with insulin. Kevin Sayer. Kevin, hey, it's Scott. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Very well, thank you. I've been uh, thinking about you a lot this morning. I'm sure you were thinking about me, too. Um, I, I'm ready. <laughs> I knew we were going to chat again. I was looking forward to it. Well, I, I was thinking about you because I thought, gosh, how many times has poor Kevin had to say what I'm going to ask him about? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I You, you have a great... Uh, I always get good feedback on uh, on your podcast, so I... I, I'm excited to chat about this with anybody. Kevin, is this your third time on the podcast, maybe? maybe? I believe this is my third time yeah. on the podcast, yes. I appreciate it every time you've been on. Thank you so much. I, I forget where I was exactly, sitting in my living room in the afternoon, and I saw, oh, Dexcom's got the uh, the approval from the FDA for the G6. I was like, this is exciting. And um, I jumped up to the, you know, I have a blog and everything like that, so I was like, well, let me... Let me try to get this information out as quickly as I can. I like to be first, Kevin. And, uh, and, and as I did it, I found myself getting more and more excited. So I think it's interesting when the real life kind of implications of the technology overwhelm my kind of like feeling, like my job feeling I have for the blog. You know what I mean? So I, I was just, all my excitement is steeped in what I expect, but don't really know anything about. So I'm just really excited to talk to you and find out the real details and see if my expectations are going to meet reality or not. What do you think are the, the highlights of this leap from G5 to G6? The list is pretty long. Uh, uh, let me start with, with the fact that there, the system does not require any calibrations. As you're talking, could you do me a favor and tell me how do you accomplish that? Like, is there, as much as you're allowed to say, I'd love to know the, like, the behind the curtain of, like, how do you get to that? I certainly can't go into all the details, but I can get into some of them. Obviously, when a sensor is factory calibrated, that means we have a good indication of how that sensor will perform inside of, of somebody's body. So, in essence, the, the software for that particular sensor experience would anticipate the performance of that sensor uh, to happen in a certain way. And I can't get into the specifics of how we do it, uh, but that's how it's done. But more importantly than that, than that, that, you know, that minute detail, it relates to the processes and controls and the science that we developed over the years. When we went down the G6 path, for example, when we started, we were going to have all the mechanical features I'll talk about in a minute, but keep the same algorithm. But our, 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 our data scientists, our algorithm scientists came and said, we think we have a better way to do this, but it's going to take a little more time. And we sat in the room and said, well, but if it's going to be better, let's do it. So the algorithm, the software has been upgraded to, to be more consistent and recognize how the sensor performs. The manufacturing processes, again, we've got uh, uh, certainly one new membrane material involved in this. 
on the sensor because the sensor blocks acetaminophen, something that people have been concerned about forever, uh, getting a high reading if they take, you know, big dose of NyQuil to go to bed at night. The last thing you want to do is wake up with a high when it went, when you may not be as high as it says you are. We've blocked that now. And, and so there's a, a lot of core fundamental technology that makes this a more reliable, more steady, more consistent experience uh, that goes into factory calibration. Okay. Now, I will add on top of that, as disclosed in our materials, uh, got, we do have the option, uh, and we did this for the future almost more than the present, if people would, would rather calibrate their sensors, if, if they have a young child and really want to make sure and feel they're more dialed in, if they calibrate it, that option exists within the menus as well. And so if, if somebody wants to calibrate their, their system, they can. And so I saw, because you guys were really nice and sent me out like this little kit of demo supplies, which by the way is really cool because the first thing that struck me is that the applicator is way smaller than I thought it was from the photographs. Well, so I, I started with no calibration uh, as far as our features. Let's go to the insertion system. Uh, for a long time, one of the biggest obstacles, and I'll, I'll say obstacles, that, that new patients have had to overcome is is the way our sensor was inserted. Uh, it just looks intimidating, even though in most cases it doesn't hurt and it's very and it is very effective. I mean that technology served us for more than ten years. It it was a good platform, but it still isn't something that that when you look at it could be a mainstream consumer device. This new applicator, the the experience is is pretty remarkable. Uh, you peel the tape off the bottom, you put it on your body where you can insert your sensor, flip the safety tab off the button on the top of the sensor, push a button, and you're done. And, and, and the applicator's done, and it's in, in your body. We effectively, from an engineering standpoint, replicated on an automated basis what happened with that manual sensor that you did before where you pushed the plunger and pulled the ring back. Mm -hmm. That's all automated now, and that all happens in milliseconds, not seconds or tens of seconds. It happens very, very quickly. So a patient will put it on and click the button. I've had a couple of times where I've, I've been involved with, with people in human factors type work where we did it. We said, I'm going to put the sensor in on three and you tell me if it hurts. And then I, and I did this to somebody, so I have to confess. And then I pushed the button and then I said, one, two, three. And they said, well, I didn't feel it. I said, that's because I pushed the button before I started counting. <laughs> uh, it, it's that much different of an experience from mechanical nature. And then the, the, the profile of the transmitter is much lower. Um, when I go to the diabetes camps or go to, to, to CWD or even you know at ADA, as we see all the people wearing our product out there, that transmitter just always looked too big to me. And the guys here will tell you I push and push and push for smaller. This is a very good advancement for patients as far as the profile. It will stick, you know, it won't get caught in your clothes as much. Uh, you notice a very big difference. Well, I'm holding, uh, I'm holding the demo of it in my hand, and it barely, the transmitter barely, barely, barely sticks above the it, sensor bed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's much smaller and much better. So you get to the convenience of the experience, and it's, it, it's, it, it's much nicer. The 10-day where uh, labeled indication, the sensor certainly performs out to 10 days very well. Um, gee, uh, th there's a new alert. There's a predictive low alert that, that if you're going to hit the, our, our very low alert of 55, it's going to give, if you turn it on, that alert, again, will come to you like 20 minutes before. I think it's 20 or 30. I don't know the exact number on that alert, but a predictive low is probably more more useful for some of our patients than a threshold alert where you go straight to 70, you know, and it doesn't work until you get to 70. The other thing that, that G6 has and it allows is the same flexibility and all the same connectivity features that G5 did. Uh, we'll have an Android and an iOS app. We'll still be able to share data. Patients will still be able to, caregivers will still be able to run share. Uh, and the flexibility of the G6 app is similar to our most recent G5 app release, whereby there's flexible alert schedules that you can set, whereby you can set a different alert schedule for the middle of the day than for the rest of the day and, and things like that. So what we think it's a great product, I would tell you as I look at it, it it really is is what I'd always hoped CGM would be. Mm -hmm. And now that we're here, 
we're going to push to get to get it even better. So it it really is the the beginning of a great day. When we launched G4 in 2012, that in my mind was the first time that we had delivered the promise. That this is this is what CGM could be mm-hmm. because it performs so much better than our our seven plus system. And and it's obvious in the growth we've experienced that that sensor platform and we've used the same sensor through G5 really led to increased adoption and had a big, a big, big influence on, on patients' lives. G6 is another platform change for us. It's every bit as important as we went from 7 Plus to G4. And this is something we can build on with future generations of products for a number of years. So we're really excited about it. Well, I, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I had, we started with a 7 Plus and it was, I mean, at the time it was it was fantastic. The best there was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the G4 was such a leap. And then the share kind of, when share started creeping in, I thought, wow, this, this ups the game for what this is for, for, you know, caregivers and people who care about people with diabetes. Big leap. I found the G5 to be, I thought, much more accurate to finger sticks than I, than I found the G4 to be. And it wasn't to say the G4 was way off. I just, there was more consistency to the accuracy for me. There's a, there, there was a new algorithm. We updated the algorithm from mm-hmm. G4 to G5. We have a new algorithm in G6. Uh, yeah. And so you didn't just change the algorithm for G6, but, but it's also whatever this little, whatever this little magic sensor wire here is, it, it's different as well. There's some new membrane technology on the sensor wire. Yes. And that's how we block uh, the acetaminophen interference. Uh, so the manufacturing process is different. Uh, like I said, pretty much everything we do, and I said this a number of times today, pretty much everything we do with G6 is different than what we did before. And so this is going to be a, a really a rapid, a big change for us. Is there much of a letdown or you, uh, behind the scenes, you're working towards whatever your next step is? There's no letdown here. We're so fired up uh, to get this approval and get this product out, but you know we have uh, and we we have an R and D close to between three hundred fifty and four hundred people. Wow! When you take all our software engineers, we had all of them together uh, at an offsite meeting. Uh, I think it was last week where I got to speak to them, and it's pretty fun. I they don't get to let up. Uh, <laughs> we focus on everything we can do to, to make these systems better and, and, and meet patients' needs in the best way possible. So with G6, this is now an execution story to a large extent. We've got to launch this and get it out there. And it's got to perform for the masses the way it's performed in our studies. Right. And we've got a great track record of doing that in the past, and we'll continue to do that in the future. And this is a global launch. This is not just domestic. Most of our products, we've then, you know, domestic first or international first and waited a while and did U.S. No waiting here. Uh, we're going to launch in the U.S. Uh, here in the second quarter. And then we hope to roll. We're going to roll Europe out in the second half of 2018. Uh, we're going to go everywhere with this. You hit Canada. And I have to tell you, a lot of people in Australia listen to the podcast. Hi, guys. Uh, but it, they they reached out, too. Is that do we hit Australia and Canada? I don't have the timing for all the countries. Okay. Uh, we'll roll. A lot of it depends upon CE mark regulation and what the regulatory authorities accept. There are some places where we have to do additional filings. Mm-hmm. So once this is approved, then we'll get CE mark, and then we have to do some additional filings in some of these countries okay. after we get CE mark. I don't have a schedule of all the countries in front of me, but it will get to Australia okay. at some point in time. The Australia community has been great for us. I swear to you, I just looked up one day and I looked at the map and I was like, why do people listen in China? And as I was clicking on the map, I'm like, look at all the people who listen in Australia. Let's talk for a second about the Omnipod. Sure, it's simple and discreet and waterproof. What does that mean? Here's one example. Do you know on the Omnipod website, they give you the steps for using the pod. Step one, fill the pod. Step two, apply the pod. Step three, push start. So let me say it again. The Omnipod insulin management system is a tubeless insulin pump that is precise, flexible, simple, discreet, and waterproof. It gives you the kind of peace of mind that you're looking for. How would you try a free demo pod? You can go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box or click on the link in your show notes. What will happen is you'll fill out the tiniest bit of information. It's like your name, your address. That's pretty much it. And you're contacting Omnipod and tell them, hey, I'd like to try a demo. Now, the demo is a free non-functioning demo pod, but you'll still get the pod. You can hold it and see what it's all about. You can apply it to your skin and wear it for a while. It's really kind of great. And then if you like it, if you're like, hey, I do really like the Omnipod. Scott told me I would, and I do. 
then you just keep the process going with Omnipod and they'll they'll help you get started. That's pretty much it. If you don't like it, it's not like they're gonna chase you around like a like you owe them money. They're just gonna be like, all right, it wasn't for them, whatever. So there really is no reason not to try. I mean, it's free, right? They're not gonna oblige you to do anything. You might as well give it a try and see what you think. I mean, listen, how would you like this to be your process for putting on your insulin pump? Fill the pod, apply the pod, press start. So it's that easy and it's tubeless and there's no obligation. I just get to try a demo out. I'm looking for reasons not to do it, but I can't think of any. I think you should try. MyOmnipod.com forward slash juice box. Let's get back to Kevin Sayer, huh? Let me drill down a little bit with some of the stuff. So no finger sticks um, because you don't have to calibrate, but you can calibrate. So when you're putting the new sensor bed on, there's this, because I, 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 I have the, the demo receiver here. What I saw was I can, I guess, scan a code that's on the sensor bed or I can yeah, choose that, not to. And, and so the way it works, uh, and we're getting into a lot of details here, uh, but the way it works is if you're using the mobile app, for example, when you put, before you put the sensor on, you scan the sensor box and that, or the the, bed, the bottom of the sensor, wherever the, the barcode is. Right. And that's what gets the factory calibration code into the algorithm. If you use the receiver, you would enter that code manually or, or scan it. If the I think the receiver code, you have to enter it. Okay. If you don't enter the calibration, if you don't enter that code, uh, then the sensor would go into calibration mode. Uh, so, but the code is not a, all you got to do is scan it with your phone. It's very, it's relatively. Yeah. No, I just, I, I, I was trying to understand why there was an option to do one or the other. Um, and because, yeah. you know, I think it's, I don't think it's a big secret that, you know, we, people restart their sensors with G5 and G4. And I think I just took Arden's off after like the second restart the other day. Wow. And as I did it, I have to say to you, the last three days of it was convenience and laziness. I should have taken it off. And I, I and, and, and it made me really think about what we're talking about here today because there was a drop dead moment where I started trusting what I was doing more than I should have. And it, it wasn't a safe situation anymore. You know, it's funny you say that uh, because as part of the classification, what the FDA did with us with the special controls around this uh, de novo approval, one of the special controls is the sensor has to shut off at the end of the period that it's been proven clinically accurate, mm -hmm. uh, that, that the patients can't restart it anymore. Okay. And with a no calibration algorithm, you can understand the science behind that, because if we assume it's a brand new sensor, a brand new sensor behaves different than one that's been in your body for 10 days that you would restart. Mm -hmm. And if the algorithm assumes it's brand new, then you could have issues with no calibrations. We didn't ever test this because we've never tested them. You know, I mean, we're labeled for, we have a labeled indication. Right. So then you could in, end up trusting something that you shouldn't trust. I applaud the FDA for doing that. I think they did the safest thing for patients, and 10 days is better than seven. And ultimately, it's our objective to get this thing out to a longer period of time, to get it out to 14 days, to whereby the, the restart uh, that you've done in the past doesn't become an issue. But it's going to have to perform for those extra days. One of the other features in this new algorithm, I can give you another example of one. If we see the sensor acting up or if the software sees the sensor not behaving, it will shut it off early and say, you know what, this isn't working. Call us. Okay. Because we, okay. de we can detect things. And again, all about patient safety. Yeah. All about making that experience better. Omnipod does the same thing. If, it, if, if the onboard system decides this thing's not right, then it's about your safety at that point. Let me ask you a question. So I have two questions wrapped around this. The first one is, is first day accuracy improved? We believe it is. Mm -hmm. We believe it is more consistent. If you look at our clinical data, the first day accuracy is is very good. Okay. Uh, we think it's very consistent. I don't have the G5 tables in front of me, but from my own personal experience in wearing them, I can tell you I've had no first day problems, okay. but I don't have diabetes either. I also don't see, you know, it's funny. I, I, I don't see a lot of issue on first day, but then I hear some people that do and I don't know if that's wrapped around how they calibrate or what they how they handle no, things. I'm I, not sure. Actually, I can tell you it's more physiology than anything else. Oh, okay. It, because the way your body handles the 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 puncture that's created by the needle when the sensor's inserted, I think it varies person to person. But by and large, uh, we've seen good first day performance with the G6, and that was one of our goals to make the performance better across all the days. Right. Let me so let me ask you this: a moment ago, you said 
you hope to get it from 10 days to 14 days one at some point. Would that be, is the goal to get to 14 days with the current gear? Not this year. We wouldn't do it this year. That would be at earliest a 19 okay. situation. And we'll have to run more clinical studies uh, to do that. So uh, stay tuned. But that's certainly our, uh, that's certainly our, our plan right now. Cool. So uh, remote sharing, nothing's changed there. I can still share with five people. That hasn't changed. No, but we are working on revisions to the share app. So stay tuned. I, I, I think we'll, we'll, increase that experience over the course of the next year as well. Is that to do something with the, gosh, how do I say this? I'm pretty sure I signed an NDA, but um, I did a lot, my daughter and I did a lot of like feedback testing and giving a lot of examples for like what an app should look like. Is that, that's that process still happening? We do, we do a lot of work like that. And I really couldn't tell you what they're going to change because I haven't seen the new one, but Suffice it to say, we're we're committed to making that software better. That's literally the next app in the in the series of apps that we've worked on that we want to refresh. Okay. But I really don't have a a, a timeline for it. I haven't even seen what they're going to do, but they have talked with a lot of patients and gotten a lot of feedback. Well, if it's anything close to what I saw, it's very cool. So, um, okay, two hours. So I'm I'm looking on some of the 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 text I have here. The device, the two-hour sensor warm-up still exists, but it says within two hours. Could it pop on sooner, or is that just... Is that it, just it'll pop on within two hours, within. Uh, but it's not going to pop on in 20 or 30 minutes. It's within, It's right around that two-hour mark. It's a give-or-take idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, do you guys try to extend to different Android phones, or are there just some that that are that are more widely used by people and those are the ones you stick with we stick with the phones that are most widely used phones we try and and do as many of those as we can it it takes a lot of work to support all those android phones because android has become a different android for everybody android samsung android lg android motorola and so we support the ones that we can we can't support all of them Mm -hmm. Uh, We just don't have the engineers to do that or or the staff to do that. So we support the more widely utilized ones. And when we see a new uh, product coming out that we know is going to be popular, we quickly try and get that one approved and into our authorized phone list. But, you know, it's a process. When you wear when you wear the G5, do you use it with a phone? Yeah, I always use a phone and I don't wear G5s anymore. Once I got to use the new applicator over a year ago. I'm, I, I, they call me a sensor snob. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't wear the old stuff anymore. I've been wearing experimental stuff now for over a year, and it's awesome. Yeah, I, I, so. I, I think I get that. Has there been? Um, you know, I've seen like Bluetooth drops between my daughter's trans uh, through her transmitter and her phone, and not not a lot, but it 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 happens, right? You'll walk away, it goes away, and sometimes it doesn't come back as quick. Is any of that different in the G6? Most of the communication protocol uh, is is the same. Mm-hmm. We didn't. I, I I'm getting a little technical on the Bluetooth side, so I'm not quite sure where it is with the current chip. But here's what I can tell you: yeah. uh, we have new electronics uh, for a next generation transmitter coming that appear to have uh, le- you know less of those issues. And Bluetooth is something that we evaluate regularly. Uh, it's interesting. We all say we want to go to the phones with our devices. And if I've had one learning here at Dexcom, it's what it really means to go to the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, All iPhones aren't the same. All Android phones aren't the same. Even all iPhones with the same iOS version don't behave the same way. And that's integrated. It's really led to a level of complexity in our business that we did not anticipate when we started down the path. I see. One of our key focuses in future engineering is better Bluetooth connectivity and more consistent communication. I think we've got some real good ideas coming in the future on that front. This one, I believe, is 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 the same. You know, we do have the backfill feature. If you walk away for twenty or thirty minutes and you come back, it it does backfill. Oh yeah, after yeah. Every yeah it's times. right there. Yeah. So that that's been good. But I, uh, you know, it, there's just a lot of things about Bluetooth that that you don't really understand until you put it into practical use. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's been a great learning for our company and, and hopefully we'll continue to do better for our patients. We, we will. 
Listen, Kevin, I go to cut out my lawn with some headphones on that are noise canceling, that are Bluetooth. If I put my phone in my left pocket, it doesn't work. If I put it in my right pocket, it does work. Trust me, that doesn't make any sense. But I, I've gone through it enough times now to know that it's a Bluetooth. It's a limitation of Bluetooth. One way or the other, it's just, it just is what it is. Um, uh, some quick questions for you, and, and then I'm going to ask some more specific stuff. Is the adhesive the same on the G6 as it is on the G5? It so is for today, yes. Okay. So that's still something you're working on. Yep. And, and I would tell you again, uh, I, I'm answering this. I've answered this question a couple times too. If I got a room, a, a, a group of users in the room and asked about adhesive, I get three answers. Answer one, make it more sticky. Answer two, make it hypoallergenic. And answer three, make it less sticky. And I'd love to be able to fix all three of those things at the same time. Uh, for right now, the adhesive is something we'll work on more going forward. We needed to get this platform out. Mm -hmm. and out to patients. And, and now we'll start addressing some of the, the other things a after the fact. And, and you'll see some innovations along those lines over the next couple of years from us that really enhance this experience. And adhesive is one of the things we're testing and, and working on as we speak. Well, I, and I, listen, I was, I was thinking 15 minutes before you and I jumped on, I tried to be like thoughtful about it. Like it's, ex it, I'm excited that things get better. Like in my mind, innovation takes you know research it takes development it takes money you have to have those 300 people you're talking about are bright people um they, oh, yeah. need, they need to be compensated um and you, you know i i, I always kind of correlate it to my wife my wife does this amazing work and she's such a bright person who comes through every day but if somebody didn't compensate her well she'd go do it somewhere else and so you guys are building from the ground up like this this you know this machine really and and on top of it you've got to you've got to build employees and infrastructure and and keep moving forward and keep up and stay you know it's just it's a lot going on i i always wonder if if ever, if people take the time to stop and think about like what happens if a company like dexcom just doesn't exist <laughs> you know I, I let me give you two let me give you three examples i'm sorry to talk a little much but okay. we realized tuesday afternoon that it was 12 years to the day that we got approval for our first three-day system oh no kidding 12 years ago to the day, mm -hmm. and two of the guys who got that approval were in the room with me when we realized that. It's got to be overwhelming, honestly. It I mean, the, the only two people were left over after 12 no, years. No, there's more than two. Oh, oh, two of, the, two of our leaders there. in the room, two of my senior people, our head of R&D, Jake Leach, and our, 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 our EVP of, of regulatory strategy and clinical affairs, Andy Balo, were both here then. And remember that three-day system and how far we've come. But we had, and I came here in 2011, Scott, we had, I don't know, 400 employees. We're almost, we're almost at 2,500 FTEs right now and, and several hundred temps in our manufacturing processes. Yeah. It's, it's really different. It's hard. And it is an infrastructure to keep up with and, and to keep moving. And there are days when all of the folks who were here when we had 50 people would like to go back to the days of 50 people. And there are days when those who come from big companies with tens of thousands of people would say, we want more structure. Yeah. So it's a balancing act all the time. And, but the goal, the nice thing about Dexcom is the goal is always the same. We do one thing. We make continuous glucose monitoring technology. And to improve that and get it, and an innovation like this one out the door is it's really monumental for us, and everybody here is is thrilled. But there's there's no no pencils down here, or no fingers off the keyboards or whatever. Everybody is busy, and Anna, we've got to make this launch very successful. Yeah, and you listen. You've heard it from me, and you've heard it from everybody. I would imagine millions of times. But the things that I accomplish with my daughter's blood sugar, with an A one C that has now been between five six and six two for four years plus four plus years. That's uh, spectacular. Then, Chinese food last night. She's in a restaurant right now having a waffle with my wife. Um, you know, that, all this stuff, everything I do, everything that we talk about on this podcast on days when you're not on talking about your stuff or, or that's it, it's all based around the things that I've seen, done, and learned because of the Dexcom. There's, there's no way around it. It's that coupled with the, with the her Omnipod insulin pump where I can make these fine adjustments without these two devices I'm back to a world where my daughter's A1C was eight and a half, and I was killing myself to get to eight and a half. And so, 
um, I, I can tell you that on most days of our lives, we don't even really talk about diabetes that much around here. It takes up such a small portion of our day uh, because of because of the work you guys are doing out there. And and not only that, by the way, but Arden comes home from school today, right before you and I talk, and the the kit's there for the demo. And I said, oh, hey, take a look. She flips it open, and, and I said, hey, I, I hear the applicators, like, it just makes it like really easy and you know, bump, you know, nearly painless, better than it is now. And she already doesn't complain about it now. And I'm showing her the flat trans. She doesn't care. She doesn't care about the trans. She, she said about the applicator. She goes, "Is it going to be easier?" And I went, "Yeah." She goes, "Good." She picks up the the receiver, which she doesn't use, and she goes, "This thing's really cool." And I realized it was because she's more technically based. She's a kid. Like she saw the electronic-y thing, and she was like, <laughs> "This is cool." And then Kevin, she just walked away from it. My daughter doesn't even really think of herself as having diabetes most days. And, and I, I can't tell you that she used to. Like she used to be burdened by it. She would cry and wonder when it was going to go away. And I haven't had a conversation with her like that in years. Um, she sleep, sleepovers. She just made plans to go to California with a friend who doesn't know anything about diabetes. I think nothing of it. Plays competitive softball all day long. Doesn't matter. It just it, it, it pulled our butt out of the fire the other day when she... You know, went to bed after a long day of softball, and I was positive she was going to be okay, but her blood sugar started to fall, and you know, we were, in, you know, it, it indicated it to us. We took care of it. I was able to treat the low without creating a high afterwards. I just, I can't tell you. I'd, I'd walk all the way out there and hug you if I could. Uh, you know, I mean, it really is. It is spectacular, and I and I know there are growing pains, and I know there are people who are going to hear the 10 day, you know, thing, and they're going to get mad and it might be a financial issue for them. And I even understand that. I, I look, I do too. And, and, and I would love to, you know, our goal, as I said, as I've said numerous times today, one of our goals is to take cost out of our device and our platform and pass those cost improvements onto our patients over time. And I think that, that we'll be able to do that, that the 10 day shut off from a performance standpoint, with no calibrations is extremely important. And I get back to, to what we've heard from patients. We've heard we don't want to calibrate for a very, very long time, loud and clear. So by offering that feature from a scientific perspective, we kind of had to make we had to make that trade-off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think I, I think patients will get there and then we'll work on, on the financial terms over time. Uh, one of our goals is to increase access to CGM. That's one of your goals in your podcast. That's what we the do. more well known yep. we are. The more access increases, the more people have access to it. I mean, it's taken us over a year to work through all the bugs with Medicare, but now Medicare patients are getting CGM on a regular basis, and that community is very happy with what they now know and what they have for their disease. So we, we got that access. Uh, it's taken a while to work the bugs out, but those patients have a good experience, and their economic uh, model is one that's that's livable a little bit different. Uh, it's more of a subscription type model, and 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 maybe things move in that direction, and it and it's easier for patients. And but I understand the the problems. I mean, health insurance is is tough. It really is. Okay, guys. So you know, Dexcom is the sponsor of the podcast, so they get an ad, right? But this whole episode is basically telling you go get a Dexcom G6. It's coming soon. By the way, Kevin's going to tell you about when it's coming. They don't have an exact date, but he'll give you an about when it's coming at the end of the podcast. You might be saying to me right now, Scott, why would I go to your link, Dexcom.com forward slash juice box or a link in your show notes and get a Dexcom G5 when I want this G6? This G6 sounds like the bomb diggity. I hear what you're saying, but guess what? You're not going to get stuck with a G5. There's going to be upgrade programs. Kevin couldn't give exact details about them, but I think you're going to find them to be generous. In the end, there is really no reason to wait. If you listen to this podcast and you know the amazing things that we accomplish with blood sugars and A1Cs because of the Dexcom technology, you want to get going right now. I mean, Kevin's going to tell you later when, you know, when the G6 comes out and maybe it's not going to be for a few months, but why would you give up months of fantastic? There's no reason to, and they don't want you to. So they're going to make it so that you don't have to. So go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box right now. Get started with Dexcom right away, and they will transition you nice and smooth into the G6. Seriously, get in that show note. Click on that link. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. It's also at juiceboxpodcast.com. Before I get you back to Kevin, let me just say this. If you're just here today for the Dexcom news, subscribe. Give the podcast a try. It's free. 
Juice Box Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever podcasts are found. You're saying there's no calibration need, but when might I want to test? I mean, are there going to be times where I, because right now I've said this to you before, I'm not embarrassed. I absolutely trust the Dexcom right up until I don't. And I base that on my experiences of the day, like looking at a line, sometimes like a graph line, it stays too flat, too long. I get a little weary of, and maybe I check then, or like, you know what I mean? Like, or if we're about to have a big meal with a ton of carbs, I'm going to make this giant bolus. I'll sometimes test to make sure that I'm, I'm where I think I am. But is that just literally not going to exist anymore? Or is there still going to be moments where I'm going to want to... You know, the way the system's labeled, you're to test it if your symptoms do not match the reading on the C, on the CGM. I believe that's in our literature, I see. as it was with G5. Mm-hmm. And so I would leave that up to you as far as when you test. But, you know, it, it's labeled. You can use it from the word go without any uh, calibrations and, and or, or without testing. And, and you'll just have to run that experience on your own and see. It's and so much of it really is like that. There's no, at the moment in diabetes, there's just no one size fits all light switch answer for anything. You have to you have to learn about it and 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 figure out how to use the stuff best for yourself. I completely agree. Well, and that that's why we left this this option in there. That and the fact it will be integrated with insulin pumps, who are are pro- possibly going to want uh, calibrations in their automated insulin delivery systems. Okay. To make sure that those things behave properly. Uh, and and deliver the best outcomes for patients. So uh, we did leave that feature in there, and and, and we'll see if if people want it or if they don't. I I so the, yeah I I have not calibrated any of them that I've worn. I'll just leave it at that. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, um, Apple three. Can I use the G six with the watch without the phone? Not yet. No. Uh, we have to make a couple of electronic configuration changes. We're working on those. And, and that will come. It's not quite there, but we will get there. And we're excited for that, too. Transmitter still lasts 90 days? That transmitter still a 90-day use, yes. All right. So, all right. How, oh, you know what? How about, um, I don't know a ton about this, but people, I got questions from people. Integration with the T-Slim X2 um, and, and just other companies, I guess, that you have, you know, I guess so, Omnip- Omnipod's doing their, their Horizon is with Dexcom, that kind of stuff. And, and Omnipod is going to do their... Horizon with with G6. Okay. So that will be integrated into that. With respect to Tandem T-Slim X2, I believe right now it's labeled for G5, and I believe their predictable blood glucose suspend will come out as a G5 product. The beauty of the Tandem T-Slim X2, though, is you can upgrade the software in that pump. So if somebody purchases that system and wants to make it their insulin delivery device based on the ability to work with Dexcom when G6 comes and when Tandem goes through, the proper regulatory processes, you can upgrade your pump, uh, you know, via cable and plug it into your computer or through Bluetooth. I don't know how they connect. And you can then go to G6 without having to buy a new pump. Oh, that's beautiful. So Tandem has a really nice feature there with that. And and hopefully when, you know, when Inflet is, is ready to go, we'll be in the same place with them, that these things will be upgradable as our technology uh, continues to move on. Is G6 right away with Medicare and Medicaid, or do you have to do something with those? No, we, we have to do some contracting. It's same with the other payers. There are some payers where it flips right over. There are others where we have to go negotiate new contracts, and we will have to file a, a new agreement with Medicare and, and certainly probably most of the Medicaid programs, and we'll be working. You can't do it till you get a device approved, sure. so those efforts will kick up shortly. Well, it's funny. There's obviously there's behind the scenes stuff when you were talking about the pumps just now and you said, well, Omnipod's using G6. And then I think back to you saying you've been wearing G6 for the last year. I think, oh, Omnipod probably had that while they're using their, I see there's stuff going on we don't know about. Um, and, and let me ask you this with no calibration coming up and it, and now it's here and now you expect it to get better and better. Is there a concern or a world where I should be worried that if I have a G6 that I won't be able to get test strips through my insurance? Will they say, but you have that? Have you guys talked about that at all? Uh, you know, we haven't, and I have not had that discussion with, with anybody yet. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, we've always said it's our long-term goal to make CGM the standard of care for diabetes mm-hmm. and eliminate finger sticks. So I guess our challenge is to make the device good enough you'll never have to get them. Yeah. I think that's right. That's excellent. Okay, so let's talk about timelines. We're coming up on the amount of time I promised you. So um, now what I've been told is, and this is very cool because of the um, 
you know, because of the warrior program, I guess, is that Arden's going to get a G6 as soon as they're available to the public um, at the very beginning, which we're very excited about. Um, but when is that? Do you have any timelines at all or hopes? Well, we've said that we would launch later in the second quarter, uh, the full launch. And, and, and so th- th- that's our time frame right now. I really can't give a, a, a firm date now. Uh, before the end of, of Q2, we'll start shipping to people. Okay. And we would expect certainly for the last half of the year, it's G6 all the way. I see. Yeah, I, I don't imagine that you guys have been sitting around not paying attention to the fact no, that you're going to have to make them And just let me say one other thing. Uh, we're going to make it right with people. So, you know, if you're on G5 right now and need a new transmitter, we're, we're not going to leave you hanging. Mm-hmm. When it comes to G6, G6, we will have G6 upgrade programs in place. Okay. Uh, and we'll work with new patients and with existing patients. We don't want people to to not get new G5 product for fear that their dollars are going to run out. We will have some very good upgrade programs for patients to make sure that they they can do what they what they need to do. Okay. Uh, the hey the the um the actual receiver right now. If I have a receiver right now with G5. When you upgrade me to G6, do I get a new receiver? Is the same receiver still work with the, it? The old receiver will not work with G6. There's the new receiver we launched for G5 uh, earlier uh, in back in 2017. That receiver can be upgraded via software up, update as well, and so it can be used with G6. It can be switched over. Oh, great. Okay. Well, I listen. I I'm, I'm not reading between the lines. You just said it. Like nobody's going to get left out on an island with old gear they don't want or stuck reaching well, into their I, I need to be too. careful. We're not, we're not also not accepting, uh, you know, I'm not opening the door for turns or anything. I'm just saying no. with the three month transmitter, right. The next time you come in, yeah, we, we, we will. And our programs will be posted on the web as soon as we iron everything out. Right, you guys right. will see. We've been very good historically about taking care of patients and making sure there's an upgrade path for in warranty patients. Mm-hmm. And, and we do our best for out of warranty patients as well. That culture and that attitude won't change. Good. Yeah. And you've all, you guys have also done a great job about getting to market faster than I've ever expected. Like everything you guys have ever given us has come before I expected it to come. Well, and so, knock on wood this yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how we do. Don't let me down, Kevin. <laughs> okay. Uh, did I not bring up anything that you, that you I, have on your end? I, I feel like we covered I think things. We've covered, I think we've covered about everything we could cover. I do, too. I really appreciate you doing this, um, and I can't wait to get the stuff and, and be able to hold it and start telling people about how well it works. All right. Thanks for your time. You, too, Kevin. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, thanks so much, Kevin, for coming on telling us about the new G6. Congratulations on the FDA approval. If you're new to the podcast, subscribe, stick around, listen. You can listen at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or any, honestly, any podcast app. Whichever one you love. You use Overcast, go listen to Overcast. What do I care where you listen? Doesn't matter to me. Hit subscribe, check us out. So a lot of great stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks, and there are 157 amazing episodes before this one. Give it a try. Be bold with insulin. If you don't know what that means, find out. Thank you so much to Dexcom and Omnipod for sponsoring the program. Your continued loyalty humbles me. This was a bonus episode this week, so there'll be another one on Tuesday. If you're enjoying the Juicebox podcast, please leave a rating and review on iTunes. Last thing, the podcast continues to grow. This is one of our best months in the history of the show. That is in large part due to you guys sharing. So thank you very much for telling others about the Juicebox Podcast. Please don't stop. Tell a friend.